So once again, uh, thanks for, or anything that you're designing. <laughs> Uh, thanks again for joining me live. And if you're watching the replay, thanks for watching the replay on the various channels that I stream to. Um, if you're on Facebook, go ahead and like the InDesign Facebook page. That way you'll get notified when these streams are scheduled. Um, that way you can um, click the, the reminder button so that you get reminded um, when the stream goes live. So uh, hello, Mary, Mary, Florida. Hello from Lake Mary, Florida. Got it. Cheryl B. Welcome. And Victoria, I see you in the house on Facebook. And welcome all the folks, uh, Chels, Mark, and Mohi on YouTube as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and get things going here. Let's talk about what we're going to do today. Now, if you joined me yesterday, we talked about um, picking colors for your next design project and color themes and for those of you who didn't see that that's probably a good reinforcement to go along with today's stream on designing your next brochure colleen all the way from cape town welcome again all right so let's go ahead and switch over to the computer <clears throat> where i've got indesign already open and ready to go and then what we're going we're going to do a couple of things we're going to show you some basic tips just in indesign just to kind of set up your brochure to begin with then we'll talk about some design tips, which is really what this is all about. And then we'll talk about some things that you can do if you're not a designer, if you, or maybe you want some fresh ideas on what your next brochure should look like. So let's first talk about the format. And uh, let me hang on, let me do one thing really quick here. If this will allow me to do it. All right. Got it. Okay. Um, Let's talk about the format. So I've, I've got, uh, I'm in the US, so we use uh, letter size paper, tabloid, bigger, 11 by 17, um, and legal and all these different sizes. But let's use the standard eight and a half by 11 just for the sake of argument. Now, of course, your brochure could be something just simply folded in half. And maybe that's what you wanna do, okay? That's one way, and of course, you would have a, a front, an inside, and a back. Another way people often want to do a brochure is they want it to tri-fold. So they want kind of a panel on the inside folded and then a panel on the outside folded. So it's kind of folded in, these, in this three panel section. And this is a common way to do brochures. There's nothing wrong with this. Kind of fits in a nice little letter envelope. Uh, the person can open it up and see the whole thing. There are six panels all together if you want to count it that way. And, um, and this has been used for decades. Um, the other way that you might want to do it is you might want to do what I call a short fold. So maybe you have uh, that eight and a half by 11 folded in half this way. And then there's, you, you didn't fold it all the way over, but you got information that shows here, information that shows here. Then the person can open it and see that and see the back. Lots of ways to think about the actual format of your brochure, but whatever format you pick, you got to pick it so that you can design it and you can design the actual layout in InDesign. So we're going to stick to the basic trifold brochure to start with. Um, and again, we're going to talk about some other formats uh, a little bit later, but we're going to stick with a standard that fits in a letter envelope um, trifold brochure. Now, brochures, we get them all the time if you're still getting mail. You know, a lot of things have gone online, lots of things you get in email, so you don't really see a lot of physical brochures anymore, but you do when you go to conferences, you do when you go to trade shows, you go, you see brochures all the time being passed out, uh, especially in the political season, you just see brochures all the time. And what's going to make or break your brochure is it's competing with every other brochure that person got. So it's got to catch the attention right away or it'll never get open or chances of it getting open are, are going to be rare. Uh, Cheryl Howard, welcome from Florida. So with that said, we're going to talk about some tips on how you can approach that concept of getting your idea across uh, so that the person will open your brochure before maybe the next person's brochure that they get in the mail. All right, so let's, let's get started in InDesign. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, create a new document. And of course I can create that document from templates and there are brochure templates. We're gonna talk about that uh, later. But one, I'm gonna show you first how you do it from scratch and then we'll talk about why you would use a template. 
Um, I'm going to stick to, here, let's just do this. Let's make it wide. Let's make it not facing pages. Let's make it two pages for the front and the back. And also, we're going to start on page one. We're not going to really number this. We're going to make it three columns for the three folds. We're going now for the margins in the column gutter. I'm going to make the margins a quarter inch, and it's just arbitrary. You can make it whatever you want, and that will make all four margins. Oh, sorry. I scrolled in the number, and it took it down. Uh, it's going to make all four numbers the same. But for the gutter, that is the space in between those columns, basically in between those folds. Um, I'm going to have that be double the margin. So that's going to be 0.5. So if you get it, so basically that would make sure each panel has the same margin all the way around. So three columns, two pages, and I hit my scroll wheel again, sorry, 0.5 for the gutter. Quarter inch margins all the way around. And again, you can change this up any way you want. And we're going to make it wide. We, and we didn't even talk about tall brochures. But yeah, there's there's ways you can use a 8 and a half by 11 fold it down or ways to do that as well. But we'll just go ahead and click create. And that will give us our frightening blank page. <laughs> all right. So if you think about the brochure, there's page one and page two. If you think about page one, well, when the brochure is actually folded, that first panel that people see is actually the right panel. Because if you were to open it all the way up, this is actually the first panel. So you need to design whatever your front panel is going to be on the right side of the page. Because once it's folded, it'll be like that. And therefore, this will be the front panel. And consequently, this is the... Um, the last panel, or actually, this is the back, and this is the inside fold. Um, and same, yeah, that's correct. Okay, <laughs> think about it for a minute. And of course, once they open the brochure, they see the three panels in a row on page two. All right, so let's start over here on the right hand side. Let's talk about what we would do here. Now, again, I did a whole thing on color yesterday. I'm going to spend a lot of time on colors today, but I did color yesterday, and you can go back and look at the replay for that if you didn't see it. But what I am going to talk about is this is the first panel. This is the thing that they see when they when you hand it to them or when they pick it up on the table or they get it in the envelope. What do you want here? And it's either going to be one of two things or both. It's either going to be an eye-catching photo or an eye-catching um, verbiage of text or both. It's going to be a great photo and text. It's going to be one of the two because otherwise people will just ignore it. So what people have to do is think about what's more important, the image that I'm trying to convey, because maybe I'm showing off a new product, a new speaker, a new car, a new whatever, and therefore the car becomes or the image becomes the most important thing, or the message that I'm trying to convey, and maybe that's the most important thing and the image just kind of backs it up. But either way, you got to make sure that that's the thing that people um, yep, and you're right. So Prism is bringing up a very good point. A common mistake in a trifold brochure is that uh, all the pan, all the make all the pages the same size. It will not. It, it'll be a little short when you fold it, and and I'll get into that. But he's right. So if you fold this in, see how that's sticking. That's I didn't fold it all the way. Sticking it out a little bit. It's it's hard to get a fold that will fit perfectly when you do it that way. Again, a little technical detail, but he's absolutely right. All right, but anyway, let's go on to this. So what I want to do is I want to, I'm going to use text because I'm going to actually make this brochure about making the brochure. So I'm going to fill it in with these little, um, these little pieces of information that will help you design your next project. So first, I'm going to start with text. I'm going to make a nice big frame here. And again, your frame, and now I'm going to the margins. Your frames don't have to go to the margin. You don't have to go all the way to the edge. You can maybe start in some so that it's not touching the edge. But keep in mind, this is a margin. This is not the fold. The fold would actually be somewhere in the middle of this. So even if I go to the margin, I'm still not going to the fold of the brochure. So there's still some space on that side, unless I wanted to, unless I wanted a photo or something that would bleed to the edge. But in this case, I'm not going to the to the fold. I'm going inside the margin, 
and I'm okay. So the next thing that you'd want here is something big and bold. And so typically we say things like, don't be a wimp. In other words, when you're designing this, this part of it, go big, go bold, go fancy font, go whatever it takes to grab the attention. And of course, that's what you type or what you say. That's up to you and your company and your brand and your brochure and what you're trying to sell. But don't be a wimp when it comes to the size of your type, the decorative nature of your type, so forth and so on. Now, I, I scaled it up even though I hadn't picked the font yet. So let's go pick a font. Uh, let's go in. And what I want to do is I want to, I'm going to turn off my filters here. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for a decorative font. So that will narrow it down to my decorative fonts. I can also say, show me the ones that I've synced from uh, the cloud. So that way I'm narrowing it down for my printer that if they're using Creative Cloud, they'll be able to use the same fonts. Uh, if I make it a PDF, that doesn't matter. And then I can scroll through and kind of find one that I like. And I kind of like this Sneakers Pro. Now, once I've done that, the next thing I'm going to do is talk about two other things. Number one, look at the, the, the space between those lines, the letting is huge on that size for that font. So I would hold down my option key and my up arrow to kind of reduce the letting there. I, want, I don't want to be a wimp, but I also don't want to have so much space that you can drive a truck through that. So we just want to make that nice and big, nice and bold. And of course, you'd make it whatever color based on your color scheme that you picked. So something that will grab attention. And again, picking your font, that is up to you. Um, the next thing is, if you're going to put something else on this page, and let's talk about alignment for a second. This is all by default left aligned. I could make it left aligned, centered, fully justified, right aligned, so forth and so on. But whatever you're gonna do, make sure that everything on your page, everything in your brochure, everything that's there, lines up with something. And don't wimp out <laughs> and default to center alignment. Center alignment can work depending on what you're doing, but center alignment is kind of like that novice way of aligning things where you keep everything centered, harder to read. The eye prefers a nice strong margin or a nice strong alignment either on the left or the right side. So that's you know been proven that that's what we like to see. All right, so the next thing is um, what do I want after that? So I could I could. And by the way, I might want to put that at an exclamation point after that. And let's make that a little bit smaller. There we go. The next thing I might want is a photo to kind of back up what I'm saying, or maybe to catch the eye as well. So in that case, um, I have to decide, do I want the photo to be just in that one panel? Or maybe I want the photo to kind of lead them in. But keep in mind, if I lead them in, this is the back. So if I make the photo go across the back, they're not going to see it till they turn it all the way around. So I might want to just keep the photo in this case in the same area. Now, um, as far as getting your photos, of course, it could be vector, it could be raster, it could be, you know, stock, it could be photo from your own camera, wherever you want to get your photo from is up to you. I'm going to go ahead and grab something from Adobe stock just for the sake of example. And I'm going to type in the word, oh, I did type in the word strength already. And I'm just going to pull in this scene. Now, I didn't, I didn't license this image yet. I'm just kind of testing this out. And as soon as I pull that in, I notice, oh, no, the image is too big for that frame. Well, thanks to Content Aware Fit, I can just click and make sure that that fits that frame perfectly. And the main subject is now in view. All right, next up. Um, if I'm going to back that up maybe with a subhead or more information down here, then again, same thing, I'm going to create an alignment, whether it's on that same margin or if I didn't indent it or brought over that, I would just basically make sure I keep them aligned. Um, and this would be whatever you would have. We will make you stronger. And I'm just, again, um, here, let's, better yet, keep <laughs> things aligned on the page. All right. Now, for this next piece of type, the font that I would choose, um, because when in graphic design, you're typically aiming for contrast. So since I used a nice, big, decorative font there, I want the exact opposite here. So um, that's nice and big. I would want something smaller and thinner. 
I'm already in, looks like Myriad Pro Light Italic. I don't want it Italic, but maybe I do want it. Um, I don't have the light version here, but I'll just do regular. Nope, actually I want something thinner. So I'm just gonna go ahead and type in the word uh, light and that will find the things. Oh, I don't, oh, nope, nope, nope. Let's turn off the decorative filter. Let's get rid of that, clear all. There we go. I'll find something nice and thin here. Let's uh, let's just try F for a light for now. And I'd still make it a little bit bigger. All right, so again, to catch that, um, to catch the eye and drive them down the page. Now, again, you can put more information there. You can talk about whatever it is you're gonna be talking about, you can, you, or you can leave white space. White space is not a bad thing. Uh, but just make sure that you're gonna keep things aligned and keep things flowing. Now. You could design the back and the inside fold if you wanted to, but I think in this case, I'm going to pretend that we're working in order. So that we just did that panel, now we're gonna open it up. So that would be page two. In page On page two, this would be the inside of that fold, and this would be whatever I wanna put. Now, since this is going to be completely unfolded at some point or can be unfolded at some point, then I'm free to really work with this entire page as a single page or continue to work in the columns, which is probably best. And in this case, I'm going to create a, an image for the inside. And again, we're just talking about tips at this point. So let's say that I wanna do something like this for the inside fold, and we'll go back to our library and just grab a sample image, and I wanna drag that one in. All right, and we'll do our content aware fit again. And now we got that image in place. Now the next thing I wanna talk about again, I wanna talk about text here. Uh, Cause at this point, you're now gonna start talking about whatever the product, service, business, whatever it is, is. And again, keep in mind, you've got this, um, this panel format, this three trifold format. So this is technically still the in first inside panel that they're gonna open. This would be the middle, that would be the last one. So my question is, and this is kind of a quick pop quiz, if you were to take your type tool and you were to, let's say, we're gonna create a text frame like this, and then you would type in whatever it is you're gonna type in. So we're gonna just say fill the placeholder text. And of course we would not have that all italic, but you get the idea. Is whatever that would say in the right font, are you liable to, if I gave you this brochure, are you liable to read this? Or let me go to my layers panel for a quick second here. Let's uh, turn off that layer. Or this. And let's say we did this. And then this. And then this. Or are you liable to read smaller bits of information like this? So the question becomes, do you don't overwhelm the person with a bunch of text? Because once we see you know, the average adult human once with our attention spans in 2019, once we see a big giant paragraph of text, we're probably immediately turned off we're probably not going to read all that information right off the bat. So break it up into groups of information that get your point across, small groups of text. And by the way, uh, I, talk, I talked about we wouldn't do this in italics. Let me do one thing really quick. Let me set my default font so that it's not italic. Let's make it Myriad Pro regular. All right, the next thing we would not do Unless your crowd is the older, and I, I say this with all fondness because I, I might fit in this crowd at some point, the older AARP crowd, you probably don't want your type size to be the default, which is 12 point. So we're, we'd probably make this not only not italic, but we'd probably make it smaller, like 10 point. A, that will let you be able to either put more in the brochure or have more room or space for other things. And B, that will just be more attractive to the eye. 12 point is very rarely used in brochures and especially business cards, which people tend to overdo it. So 10 point 
maybe even nine point, depending on your crowd. If you're going to a younger crowd, you can go smaller. I would say that yeah, 10 would be the largest I would do for any type of body copy. The other thing with body copy in terms of picking a font, You'll notice that most things that you that are text heavy that you read a lot is that you typically see that font as a serif font. Like these are sans serif fonts. I'm using Myriad Pro regular uh, 10 point type. These are um, serif fonts, but typically when you're seeing things that are booklets or brochures or things that you would read, you typically see it in, a, in what's called a serif font. So I would probably use something like here, let's go back. Let's go. I would probably use something like Adobe, maybe. I saw one earlier that I would use. Oh, you know what? Let's just narrow it down. Let's use our filter. That way we can narrow it down to just the, there we go. Adobe Castlin Pro. If I have the non-italic version of that, I would use it. Or maybe Century Old 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 style standard or Garamond Premiere Pro. That's the one I was looking for. So Garamond Premiere Pro, nice serif font and a 10 point or smaller size, probably a little easier in the eyes. You can save these sans serif font for maybe your headlines or your bigger type or your thing that's going to, um, that's going to draw attention. And uh, even though we use that nice big decorative don't be a wimp font here, that's kind of a decorative font. And usually when you're using a decorative font, you usually only use it once, like in one big place, one big area that you're going to do something with. If you have another big area that you're going to do something with, you're trying to call attention to, that's great. But you wouldn't use it for like all your subheads and your headlines. Um, the next thing too, uh, speaking of that, let's say you're going to do this. Uh, let's say you're going to do something like read me. So a couple things with this. Number one, uh, use all caps sparingly. Like it, it, it can get your attention across, but it's also bigger and actually harder to read. Believe it or not, all caps or, or, or sentence case is easier to read than all caps. Studies have been done. If you're going to do text on an angle or up, uh, you know, vertical, make sure your text reads up versus reading down. So in other words, if you're going to do this, which I don't really recommend unless you just fit your design and you really want to, make sure your text is not reading down. Make sure it's reading up. Uh, it's just... Again, we, we tend to like things going up and to the right. We like things in a, uh, you know, in a positive direction. Down is looked at as a negative direction. Uh, so I would say if you have to turn your type on the side, I don't recommend it, but if you have to, make sure it's reading in an up direction. And last but not least, before we move off of this, um, if you're going to do bullets, use decorative bullets. Go find a font that has like decorative symbols that you could use as a bullet. Be consistent. Don't use like a different one for each one. But we're, we're so tired. Our eye gets very tired quickly from that round dot. So use something that kind of catches the attention. And there are lots of symbol fonts that you can just pick a symbol to be your bullet if you're going to do bulleted text. Don't do bulleted text unless you absolutely have to, but use it sparingly. And if you're going to use a bullet, use a bullet that's actually decorative. Use photos wherever you can. People like breaking up the text with photos. And last but not least, even if you have a very text heavy document, you have, let's say you just have to have a lot of text in one area, then you might do something like this. Let's say we have to have a lot of text in this area for some reason. And we've made the, uh, we made it smaller. We made it the 10 point. Then what you might also do to break up that text is you might do something like this. Let me grab a graphic that kind of would back up whatever you're saying there. Let me get out of the uh, search here. Let's get out of the search. And let's say that I'm going to use this. Let's say I'm talking about lemons for some reason. Now, I can have that image in the background. So we're going to send it to the back. Uh, we're going to do arrange, send to the back. And we're going to lower the opacity of it. Let's see if I can get to that really quickly here. In the new properties panel, I'm just going to lower the opacity. 
Because that will also kind of help things if you lower it enough so it's not interrupting and not taking away from the type. Also, if you make it one color, as opposed to yellow and black in this case, yellow, black, and white, that will help the design flow if you have an image with a lightly grayed out Im you know, image behind your text to kind of just make it more visually appealing. Big groups of text, most people are going to be turned off by anyway and not want to read. So if you can kind of break that up with some kind of visual element behind it that backs up what you're saying. Uh, in this case, if I were talking about lemons, I'd put that lemon behind it. And I would also put that lemon probably on one side or the other and probably facing into the text, not away from it. All right. So those are just some, again, quick tips on designing in general for a brochure. Now let's talk about if you don't want to do any of this from scratch and you can't, or maybe you just want to uh, kickstart or jumpstart on your ideas. If you head over to, um, sorry, I was on a Facebook page there. If you head over to stock.adobe.com, typically people think, well, I, I would only go there to look for an image. Actually, you can actually uh, specify that you're looking for templates. So you can narrow the search down to templates and you can say brochure. Once you um, search brochure, you can view filters and you can narrow it down even further to say only InDesign brochures or Photoshop or Illustrator if that's what you're working in. Then you can find some good ideas to, to kind of help you kick things off or maybe get things started. Like I really like visually I like this one. That one catches my eye. Uh, there was one up here that kind of caught my eye. This one looks a little too busy for me. I did download that one as a bat, as a not great example. I like the way this is broken up by the visual uh, diagram or, or triangles and shapes. Um, I guess shapes would be the best way to say that. And so if you find one that kind of like gets you started, gets the juices flowing for kind of what you might want to have. Again, here's another trifo. I, I like the... the, the um, the white space in this one or negative space, then you can uh, download the brochure if it, and by the way, I thought I was signed in. Oh, I'm not signed in. Hold on. All right. Hang on. Let me switch back to me while I sign in. All right. Let me get signed in real quick. And then we'll talk about that. Uh, Oh, now I'm signed in. Okay. All right. And now it's showing me the ones I licensed. And let's go ahead and try this one again. All right. That one's been saved. So now if I head back over to InDesign, and now if I were to do a new document, in my recents, um, as soon as that one comes down, that one would be here as well. So here's a couple of the other ones I got, but it will show up in your recents. And you can close it and try it again. You have to wait for it to sync. And then you should see it there in your recent documents. There it is. Okay, so now if I double click on it, if it needs a font, you can go ahead and activate that font because it's part of your Creative Cloud. So none of, the, none of the templates use fonts that you can't have. In other words, this is using uh, Bevis Kai regular. Um, so if I activate that font, now that font is no longer missing. And again, now it's ready to go. I can go ahead and start working in this brochure. Typically, the, the documents have or the templates have um, multiple page sizes. This one looks like it only has the uh, one size, but if it did have multiple page sizes as alternate layouts, you can get rid of the alternate layouts from the pages panel that you don't need. Uh, so here, let me check this just to make sure. All right, this, yeah, this one's set up as an A4. So if I needed this to be a different size, I can actually adjust the layout. And I can say that this should be letter instead and it will <laughs> readjust accordingly. Um, now, some of the things got cut off, I'm gonna undo that just so we get our everything back. So at this point, I can now zoom in. I can begin getting rid of things I don't need and filling in things that I do need, or basically just, again, copying some of the ideas from here. So again, same trifold concept. 
The panel on the right hand side is the, the opening, beautiful colors, nice color scheme, nice big fonts to begin with to kind of pull you in. Um, and then the inside, nice color scheme there, nice big headline going across the whole thing, again, to pull you in. A quote, some text here, um, the headline here or subhead here that you can go ahead and change that to whatever you want, and then frames for all your images. And of course, with these templates, anything that you don't want or you're not going to use, no problem. Get rid of it. You're not going to have a photo there. You're not going to have this here. You can get rid of those things and say, hey, I'm only going to have the one photo on the back. I don't need these rules. I don't need any of this stuff. And I can go ahead and get rid of them. Or maybe I want this, this whole thing moved up. Maybe I want it at the top here. And I'm going to put something else down here below. So anything can be deleted. Anything can be rearranged. Anything can be moved. Um, you're not locked into anything. The template, the template police are not going to come knocking on your door saying, hey, you didn't use that right. You can use anything you want. If you don't want these topics here, you can go to the master page and get rid of them. Uh, so anything that you like about the template, use or keep. Anything you don't like about the template, get rid of. All right, um, and again, you'll notice here, even, even in this design, same thing I talked about text, short passages of text. Not, you know, that's probably the longest paragraph. Not one big long thing to read, not one big thing that covers the whole page to read, just short pass passages to get your message across, get your information across, and then you lead them to the next step, which is whatever, go to your website, call you, whatever that might be to go to the next step. So I hope this helped you as far as um, uh, I hope this helped you in, in terms of your design for your next project or your next brochure. So Colleen's disagreeing with me, disagreeing with me for the text down concept, but again, proven right here, text going up. So I would say that there's no, there's nothing stopping you from having text read down, but it's more positive if it reads up. If you disagree, by all means, design all your brochures with the text going down. All right. <laughs> with that said, uh, I hope this helped you. And I hope that you got something out of it. And more importantly, I hope that this will help you on your next design project. So with that said, thank you for watching. And we'll catch you in the next one. Bye, everybody.